What's up everyone and welcome back to the comps channel. Today's video is going to be the start of a new series of videos where I go through setting up a remote digipeter. We have a remote digipeter setup that we're revamping with some improvements and I'll bring you along to show you the process so you can follow along in case you'd like to set one up for yourself. So join me as we go ahead and build this remote digipeter. We're approaching a restricted area. Restricted area is one mile west. Before we get into it, I just want to give a quick shout out to the channel's recent supporters. Your support is very much appreciated, and if you're finding these videos useful and would like to support the channel as well, you can do so by using the coffee link in the video description or by using the thanks button below the video. Thank you for your support and helping with the channel's continued production. First, I want to briefly go into what a digipeter and what packet radio in general is. I assume a lot of my new subscribers arrived here from an interest in Meshtastic and may not know what a digipeter is, so I'll go over some of the similarities digipeters and packet radio have with meshtastic so it's easier to follow. I'll explain digipeters from the APRS side of things since that'll be the most similar to meshtastic and APR stands for automatic packet reporting system and it's been around since 1984 and it's a way to transmit data like text messages, weather info, and GPS locations just like you can do with meshtastic. You'll generally have stations just sending out their position or text messages and would be similar to using Meshtastic as a client. One difference, however, is Meshtastic devices will still rebroadcast even in client mode, whereas these APR stations won't rebroadcast unless they're a Digipeter station. Speaking of Digipeters, you'll also have stations that are Digipeters, and these would be similar to a Meshtastic node in more of a router or a repeater role, since a Digipeter is meant to receive a signal from other Digipeters or stations and rebroadcast the data. Also similar to Meshtastic, APRS has hop limits to prevent packets from never ending and creating congestion. So why are we bothering with this when we already have Meshtastic? It's important to not have all of your eggs in one basket and spread out your communications capabilities into multiple systems, including different types of systems, as every type will have its own pros and cons. So, speaking of that, what are the advantages of APRS or packet radio over Meshtastic? The first one is going to be both an advantage and disadvantage, and that is it's used in ham radio. So the downside of this means you need to be licensed, but having that license means you're open to a wide range of frequencies and device options. While Meshtastic is generally limited to use in the ISM bands, like the 915 band we have here in the US, having even the lowest ham radio license opens you up to using data modes like this on 10 meters, 6 meters, 2 meters, 70 centimeters, 33 centimeters, which is also the ISM band, 23 centimeters, and even beyond that well into the gigahertz frequency ranges. You're also not limited to the 1 watt of power and can use up to 1500 watts with the exception of the 10 meter band which is limited to 200 watts. As far as device options, there's a long list of radios that support APRS and the Kenwood models with APRS and full packet radio TNC capability which I highly recommend and we'll get into in later videos when we start putting our Digipeter to use. There are also TNC devices like the Nucleo TNC and TNC4 that I've covered in my channel previously that allow you to make standard radios packet radio capable. And for those of you new to packet radio, a TNC is a device like a modem that interfaces your radio and computer together to send data back and forth by modulating and demodulating the data signals as audio. So as you can see, there's great benefit in having these additional communication capabilities. And this is why we're revamping our Digipeter and we'll continue using it among our other comms. So let's get into our plans for the Digipeter by going over the original setup and what we plan on doing to upgrade it. For the radio in our original setup, we use the 2 meter version of the TYT9000D that was slightly modified to do packet radio. One of the earlier videos on my channel showed how to do this and I'll include a link in the video description below. For the TNC, we used an older Raspberry Pi 2 running a software TNC called Direwolf and to interface the radio to the Raspberry Pi, we used a device called a DigiRig which is essentially a USB audio interface with the ability to control the radio's transmit when sending a packet. 
And then to power everything, we used a 100 watt solar panel, a PowerWorks MPPT solar charge controller designed for LifePo4 batteries, and a 100 milliamp hour LifePo4 battery. We also had a current and voltage meter from DF Robot connected to the power system to feed data to the Raspberry Pi so we could remotely monitor the battery levels. So that was the old setup and a good bit of that will go into the new setup as well, but let's go over the changes we're making for the revamp. The first change is going to be the battery. I didn't know much about lithium based batteries when we first deployed the Digipeter and I was unaware of the issue with charging them in below freezing temperatures. Doing this is bad for the batteries and we've noticed some degradation in the battery's performance since then. For this new setup we'll be using a battery that has cold weather features and we'll go more into that when we do the video on how we're going to power the Digipeter. The second change is going to be the radio setup. As mentioned earlier, we're using a TYT9000D modified for packet radio. Now this is a 60 watt radio and since our Digipeter is running off of solar and is at a location with good elevation, we've been using it at the lowest power setting which is 10 watts. We suspect that this is still more than what we need to communicate so we're going to switch to a 5 watt handheld radio. Now I'm a big fan of Kenwood's packet radios and have all of their handheld packet radios with full TNC capabilities including their latest THD75. Now that means that their oldest and original packet handheld radio, the THD7, is just collecting dust and will be breathing some new life into it and use it for this project. Now there's a few reasons why we're going this route and surprisingly it's not because it already has a built-in TNC. Direwolf has more flexibility and offers a better TNC so we'll be using that. The reason we're going with this Kenwood handheld option is because it'll be lower power draw than the TYT9000D. It has a 13.8 DC input and the radio can be controlled via PC with support from the software called Rig Control that will be running on the Raspberry Pi which will allow us to do things like remotely change the frequency on the radio if needed. The third and final change will be upgrading to a newer Raspberry Pi like the Raspberry Pi 4 or maybe even a Pi 5. The reason for this is the Raspberry Pi 2 doesn't have Wi-Fi or Bluetooth capability. I have some cool plans for this that I still need to do some testing on so I won't go into that just yet but stay tuned for that later in the series when we get into the Raspberry Pi configuration. That'll do it for this video going over some of our plans for the remote Digipeter upgrade and I hope you found it useful. If you did, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already done so, so you won't miss out on the upcoming videos in this series covering the battery and solar power setup, including remotely monitoring the battery via the Digipeter, setting up the Raspberry Pi, and getting it to communicate with the radio. Hope to see you there, thank you all, and have a good one.